The caves of the Caribbean are home to a slick bird that thinks it's a bat. Deep in these midnight caverns, shining and unwelcome light will be met with the anguished screeches of the little devil known as the oil bird. But how does this bird navigate in the pitch black to find its favorite tasty fruit? Well, it all comes down to having the right tools for the job here in life, death, and taxonomy. Death and Taxonomy. It's your 30 minutes of interesting animal info. I'm Joe. And I'm Carlos. No delay there. Thank you to Cassie for the creation of this theme song. To our theme. Of our theme song. I have a different place. Got the yips. Uh, to hear more of Cassie's music, please search Cassie and Michelle on YouTube or Spotify. And thank you to Johanna for the creation of this week's artwork. To check that out, you can follow us on Facebook or Twitter or visit us at our home on the web at ldtaxonomy.com. And a very special thank you to our patrons, to Tristan Taylor, Jesse Raspolich, Carol Raspolich, and Richard Kaspar. Thank you so much for your support. It's greatly appreciated. Thanks for helping us keep the lights on. And today we're talking about a bat, I mean a bird. But more on that later. Good catch. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't write that right here. <laughs> Um, if you're listening to this only and you are wondering why it sounds different. Bad? Not bad, just different. <laughs> Less able to hear it crisply. Why is yeah, why is the quality dipped so much? We're in the same place, we're using one microphone that is not meant to be used by two people. Like I subscribe on Patreon. They're supposed to afford this stuff. Well, at least if you're on Patreon. Well, no, if anyone can read our lips by going to YouTube. <laughs> can read our lips if you can't hear this. Um, but yeah, we're, we're in the same space. Second time within, within 12 months. That's true. Because we did this back in September, and I've struggled to find a way to make this work on my desk. <laughs> but we're... We're, we're here. It's just like the good old days where we uh, recorded with that Yeti microphone in a closet surrounded by your Gengar t-shirt. Yeah. And uh, instead of um, instead of a sword, your the background is credentials. Yeah, you can see how qualified I am to talk about um, things I read on Wikipedia. Well, you, well, you're qualified to communicate. Yeah. And, <laughs> and I've got to be honest, like... A lot of what got me through school was things I read on Wikipedia. So I'm just, you know, <laughs> I got Wikipedia to thank for those uh, degrees of their not flexing. Um, yeah, what are, what are we talking about? We're talking about the oil bird. Delicious. And we're not talking about the one that Don soap <laughs> makes not an oil bird. <laughs> the the arms of the angel. The... <laughs> Um, yeah, the oil bird. It's also called the, uh, Diabloton. Diabloton? I don't know. Debutante? Yeah, it's the debutante. Uh, um, the, it's, well, what do you think Diablo, Diabloton means? Devil or something? Yeah, you're right. It's a little devil. <laughs> <laughs> little devil? Yeah. Little, little devil snack cakes? It's the chocolate one? <laughs> it's little devil's food. <laughs> oh, yeah, little devil cakes. Um, but like instead of little Debbie, it's like Annabelle or something like that, a haunted doll thing. Oh, I, I thought you were thinking. I'm thinking of a cow, Annabelle. No, but Annabelle's like the name of that like evil doll, yeah. evil doll movie. Um, anyway, it's so it's that's French for little devil because its cries apparently sound like someone being tortured. Uh, although I listened to quite a few recordings of its cry, and I would say it sounds like a mix between. Um, a pig squeal and a cat in heat. Huh. It's like a... Rah, 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 rah. It's like... Not necessarily someone being tortured. But, you know, I I gotta be honest, outside of movies, I haven't... I haven't <laughs> you haven't heard a real one. have not really been exposed to a lot of torture. Um, also, like, when you shine a light at the oil bird, it's, its eyes turn red because, oh. it's got, because of the reflection. So it looks like a, a little devil. You hear I thought you were going to say the whole world sees... 
<laughs> we're singing. Um, but we're going to call the oil bird here, Chubby Chicks. <laughs> Which will make sense later. And Oil Shrill. Oil Shrill. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's not subtle. No, not at all. Uh, would you like to hear what a science has to call it? Yes, I would. Yeah, there, there's another, like, what's Guarcho? Guacharo? There's that, another locally known as Guacharo? Yeah, I couldn't find the definition for that. I just wanted to go with the one, like, um, localized, the one international language one. I chose the French one because I had a, like, this is why. But the other ones are, um, like, indigenous hmm. names for it as well. Okay, well, what's the indigenous name that science uses? Indigenous to the, the earth. Yeah. Uh, it's in the kingdom you know you are in and you have an affection for. The kingdom Animalia. It's in the, it's in the five. <laughs> I, I did not mean to, to choose some of the more diff most difficult uh, taxonomy words for this one, but it looks like you got, you got landed with it, so... Well, the the phylum is chordata. So far, so good. Mm -hmm. The class is aves. You probably could have guessed that by now. The clade is strisores. Strisores. Ricola. Strisores. Um, the order. Here we go. There's a lot of syllables in this. Mm -hmm. Steatornithiformes. 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 Formies, yeah. Uh, and the family is Steatornithidae. Steatorn yeah, Ste Steatornithidae. Yeah. That's that one's that one rolls off the tongue a little easier. At least there's not like strange vowel combinations in this. The E and A. There's an E and A uh in the Stea, and then there's an A and E at the end with the A. Like yeah. Stea Tornithidae. <laughs> <laughs> uh, they just needed two eyes in there to make it just mwah. <laughs> uh, the the genus is stay stay to tornus which it means fat bird good <laughs> which i mean since i'm telling you this obviously yeah we're not doing nitty-gritty nomenclature and hopefully um it doesn't we don't lose this yeah um and then the species is uh the binomial name is stay tornus carapensis didn't we that sounds familiar, Carapensis. It oh. doesn't to me. Hmm, 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 hmm. Um, yeah, so fat bird something else. <laughs> <laughs> but since we're in the business of naming things, it's time for my favorite part of the show, c -c -c critter groups. The part of the show where I ask you, Joe, a question. And that question is the same every time. What is the name of a group of this animal? Or what is the term of entry? Or what is the collective noun? There's three ways to ask the same question. If you saw a group of oil birds, would you say it's A, an echo of oil birds? B, a cannondale of oil birds? C, a pinch of oil birds? Or D, a slick of oil birds? Um... A slick is great, but that's really on the nose. Well, give me the, the first two again. Echo and Cannondale. Cannondale? I can look you in the eye. Yeah, I know. Now you can read my <laughs> face. <laughs> I'm going with Cannondale. Uh, is that your final answer? Yeah. You are incorrect. But I etched my beard because I was I had an itchy beard. Um, and it, w it wasn't a sign of that that was the right answer. Uh, the answer is echo. It's an echo. That nah, doesn't, was, I was going to say slick. That was where my heart was going. I don't know why I thought of Cannondale. I thought, now that I think about it, I th isn't that a, a camera? No, that's just Cannon. So I don't know what Cannondale is. It just came to my, my mind. I put it in there. Um, this looks pretty good. Guess who um, is credited with having first described this bird? Um, Thaddeus J. Oil. No. Alexander von Humboldt. 
Guess what else? Ah, that sounds familiar. He Episode also one. is credited with uh, first describing the Humboldt squid. Yeah. Which Man. Is first episode. Go back in time and just be the person that first describes things. Yeah. I, I can't imagine it's that lucrative of... <laughs> no, of it's lo- just for posterity. It's But it's it's in that, tr- it's in that like, Western treasure hunting, exploring era where it's just like, let's go to the farthest corners of the earth and discover things and that's a squid put my name down on it (laughs) (laughs) but yeah um it's on you now it is would you like to have it described to you yeah what does an oil bird look like well they're relative uh they're related uh and shaped like night jars um, if you know what a night jar is, it's kind of a similar shape. You keep cookies in it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, this is the night jar. We, if you can't have any in the night, night, yeah, we put it in the day jar when we, <laughs> for cookies. we have a night jar and a day jar for cookies in our house. <laughs> uh, they sit horizontally and, uh, often sit with their bellies on the, on a surface rather than upright. So like it cor- sort of has a. A night jar mixed with a parrot look, um, but it doesn't sit like up, you know, vertically like a like a parrot does. It's like a horizontal bird. It's a belly bird. Yeah, a belly bird. Uh, they have whiskers around their beaks called r- r- rictal, r i c t a l, rictal bristles. They're very mustachioed. Yeah, they're like walruses. Um, and I can imagine what that might be for, um, considering the facts later on. Um, like many night birds, the oil bird has soft feathers to help them fly more silently. But Wikipedia said not as soft as owls. So don't like get too excited. Yeah. I I know that everyone knows exactly how soft an owl's feathers are. (laughs) Don't, it's not that bad. (laughs) I mean, it's not like... It, it, it's it's not jergen soft if you touched an owl and you're looking forward to another owl like experience when you touch a oil bird it's not gonna be like it's that. not jergens it's pert and popular let's, <laughs> let's just bring bring that right back um but the reason is because owls need to sneak up on prey in the middle of the night so they need to be dead silent um so their feather feather softness helps them fly quietly but night uh oil birds are not in the same business so they don't need the same equipment um its head and wings are mainly reddish brown with white spots uh lower parts of their body are cinnamon colored which Mm. that sounds like reddish brown to me i don't know what the (laughs) difference is um with uh white diamond shaped spots that start small toward the throat and then get larger towards the back um, brown tail feathers are spotted with white on either side. So they're brown, white, and reddish in color. Um, but what, what, how big are they? Well, that brings us to the Measure Up segment. Uh, welcome to the Measure Up segment, the official listener's favorite part of the show. The part of the show where we present the animal size and dimensions in relatable terms through a quiz that's fun for the whole family. It's also part of the show that's introduced by you when you send in yourself saying uh, singing or squawking like a tortured person uh the words measure up into ld taxonomy at gmail gmail gmail.com we do have a new measure up intro this week noise from shayla do you remember who shayla is it's not sheila it's not sheila we talked about that yes uh uh yeah uh without further ado the listener's favorite part of the show I've never heard such a quintessential soundboard esque dog bark. <laughs> That's like what Gene Belcher plays on Bob's Burgers. It's just like Rrr. Yes, yeah, yeah. That was the perfect bark. That was the that was the platonic ideal of a dog bark. Yeah. That's the Gerber baby of barks. <laughs> This is a baby, and this is a dog bark. <laughs> yeah. 
we've solved it. Uh, <laughs> Everything else is a deviation from this. <laughs> have you ever played the, uh, the Lion game? There's like a good Lion game if you have cell phone service. There's a good Lion game. Lion. Like if you're stuck in a line or if you're stuck, if you're waiting for something. Okay. That's a good game that you can play. Where you, somebody names a first name and everyone has to guess who the, the most, like, who the first person in a Google image search will show up. Oh, that is a good nine game. So, like, if you say Will, and everyone's like, Will Ferrell, or, you know, Will Arnett. Like, okay. You have to guess which one it is. Um, Probably it, a lot of questions starting with Will. Yeah. Like, so, like Will at Pizza. Yeah. I don't know. Like, it's Google Images, so it's not oh, yeah, just... Um, just a bunch of pictures of Rhett and Link. <laughs> so, like, if you could Google what a bark looked like, or could sound like, like... If there was a... If there was a Google sound Google, search, Google sound search, this yeah. dog's bark would be uh, Shayla's bark. Yes, uh, that was sent Shayla's by Shayla's the dog, or the person. Shayla is the dog. The dog belongs to Nora. Oh, gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Yes, thank you, Nora. Uh, thank you so much. She's been putting the team on her back once again. Um, if you'd like to help Nora out, uh, Nora and Shayla out. Send us a measure up intro at ldtaxonomy.gmail.com. And she gave us a lot of interesting facts about poodles, which we talked about in our uh, warm up. If you want to go check that out, if you're a patron. Yeah. Um, so let's get into it. Let's talk length. So between 40 and 90 centimeters, or 16 to 19 inches. So not a tiny bird. Not a small big, bird at all. Pretty big bird. So how many oil birds go into the longest fully st stretched slinky? The longest slinky when fully sl stretched. Wow. Which is just a just just a cord of st st steel. <laughs> yeah, I, I guess they're made of steel. I really don't know what they're see, made of. See, like fully stretched is misleading cuz technically you could stretch this slinky out so that it is a cord of steel is that not what we're talking That's, about no i think you would have to like a slinky that you could stretch to the point of it like still being a slinky and not being destroyed oh okay because <laughs> I, I thought when you said a fully stretched slinky i imagined like in in futurama when bender goes on like an a bending spree like he bends in his sleep he turns zoidberg's slinky into just a rod of, of, <laughs> of metal that's the opposite of bending yeah um, he, well he unbends it so like i'll just give you like it is the slinky's regular size doubled this it's compressed size doubled that's it yeah i feel like i i could get a slinky that's this that's like four inches and then stretch that out like six feet. Oh, yeah. This particular one. Because uh, the Slinky was made by Alan W. Jesse in 2017 for an exhibit on late uh, on late 20th century toys. Um, oh, so it's a bad Slinky. It's... It's a, it's a Slinky f from, from, the, from the 1910 times. It's a... Uh, no, no, no. Late 20th century would have been... The 70s, 80s. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like 20th century. Now. And this was in 2017. So, um, but this slinky was four feet I... in diameter. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> four feet in diameter. This is a hula hoop. <laughs> and uh, 150 pounds. Okay. All right. So, the more information we get about this, the less... The less and also more odd it sounds. Like a slinky that can only go ha double its normal length? I mean, that's... I I was born in the late 20th century, and I had a <laughs> slinky that was better than that. Um, but if it's the size of a hula hoop, then that's a little different. Um, Nineteen inches. That's a, that's a lot. I'm going to say three. Three final answer. Wait, 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 wait! No, this is a four foot. This thing's huge. Yeah. We. Uh, this is a toy. A twentieth century toy. It's a slinky. It was made. It's a slinky you could kill someone with. <laughs> it's. It was an exhibit piece at um like um, 
exhibit an exhibit on 20th century toys so it's like a set piece it's like in the lobby or whatever yeah it's a slinky for grop yeah it's a big slinky <laughs> it's a giant slinky Hagrid's Hagrid's full giant brother um <laughs> fine ten feet I don't ten ten feet what is that what is that in oil birds? What, yeah, what is that in inches? Uh, six point three oil birds. Six point three. This is yeah, it's probably like a mile long slinky, but whatever. Six point three oil birds. This is a ten foot slinky. <laughs> Final answer. <laughs> yeah. Move that decimal decimal over one. Sixty three uh. oil birds. The slinky was fifty feet compressed and a hundred feet at full this is not a toy <laughs> it's a, not a toy it's an exhibit piece if it at came a toy to exhibit. life in a pixar movie it would murder the other toys <laughs> it would be like a uh onyx <laughs> it's onyx a steelix it's it's it's, it's that tra one transformer that just sucks everything up and destroys it all it's the one that's 50 50 times bigger than all the other transformers yeah yeah, it's, it's it's an exhibit piece. Just picturing a like a mom from the eighties, like, and you said it was like, <laughs> when you hey, go Jimmy, to, do you want this one hundred and fifty pound, hundred foot long no slinky? It. No, it's not a for purchase. <laughs> when you go to Disney World to the Toy Story Land, there's giant toys everywhere. Yeah, there's they're toys. They're giant depictions of toys. So it's like, this is what a slinky would look like if you were a mouse. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's all it is. Um, <laughs> you don't have to purchase it. You don't have to have it in your house. I mean, you don't, you, have you ever had to purchase a slinky? Have you ever been in that like economic position? <laughs> you can't afford not to buy it. <laughs> it's so cheap. I went bankrupt because I didn't buy that massive slinky. <laughs> the very big slinky. It was a bull market for slinky. <laughs> it was... <laughs> Um, you got you got to buy low sell high when it comes to those slinkies, <laughs> those big big slinkies. Um, they're too big to fail. Uh, <laughs> it's too big to fail. Um, they said that about the Titanic. They said that about big banks, and now they're saying that about slinkies. Um, uh, let's talk weight. They're between three hundred and fifty to four hundred and seventy grams, or twelve point three to sixteen point eight ounces. Okay. That's a thick bird. Yeah. Um, so how many... Full of oil. <laughs> how many... Big oil. How many oil birds go into the weight of the heaviest bardiche? Do you know what a bardiche is? Um, sounds seedy. Well, it's a... If, if, you, if you consider killing people seedy... It sure. is a weapon of war. It's a medieval pole arm that is similar to a halberd, but it has no spear or hook. So you know how like a halberd is... You have like... been playing Elden Ring again. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, before I started playing Elden Ring again, we were on a, like a medieval, medieval weapon ring yeah. thing. Um, but it's like a big, giant, broad axe head on a stick. Like an executioner's thing? Yeah, sort of. Okay. But it's a long stick. Uh, here's a hint: the bardiche was used in into the era of firearms, and the bare top. The fact that it's not a halberd with a spike at the end, the bare top made it useful for steadying your handguns. So you'd put it in, put it on the ground, and put your handgun on it. Huh. And then pick it up and chop someone when instead of reloading. Yeah. Because who who has that kind of time exactly. on the battlefield? I have. It's axe time. Yeah. <laughs> um. Usually. The le the the weight of it? The weight of it. The the heavier weight. There's multiple weights, the heavy end. I think this. we've shown how terrible I am at assessing the weight of uh melee weapons. Or the weight of anything in general. Because they look heavy, but they they're big hunks of metal. Axes are heavy though. <laughs> True. Well, and the way you use them is is because they have mass, which is different from a sword. True, true. true. Swords are cutting instruments. But that's it's more because the mass is concentrated to one spot. 
So like um, an axe for chopping wood is actually quite heavy. Yeah. But an axe for chopping heads might not be as heavy. Depends on how big the axe head is. Yeah, and how big the head head is. That needs to be chopped. Yeah. It's true. Um, I'm gonna say fifteen pounds. Cause you just right, you just spin in circles. That's how you wield it, right? You just kinda hold it at the end and just just spin like a top and then whoever gets in your way just gets in your way. Mm -hmm. That seems like solid battlefield tactics <laughs> to me. Um Oh, I mean the answer is like fifteen, because <laughs> this thing weighs about a pound. So, okay, final answer. Fifteen, yeah. Correct answer is eight point five. Once again, I have drastically overestimated the weight of melee weapons. Uh, the bar, the bardiche on the heavier end was nine pounds. If it was fifteen pounds, I'm see like a sledgehammer. That's what I'm. That's <laughs> yeah. what I'm feeling. But it's like, it's a sledgehammer isn't as long, so it's like balances out. Yeah. So I have two hatchets. One of them is made for like cutting logs and wood, um, and the other is made for like taking camping and putting on your belt, so you can cut logs and wood. I guess <laughs> um, just less efficiently, but you can take it with you. Yeah, but the one that's like. But that it's got a it's like a thin piece of metal with holes in the head, so that it's as light as possible. And you could probably throw this. Um, I mean, you so, could throw any of them, right? Yeah, I guess. If you yeah. really wanted to. Yeah, uh, you could throw it effectively in, in, at a distance. But um, yeah, I mean, axe. If you're trying to carry something around all day, it can't be like carry something around and swing it all day. Yeah, it's got to be light. Weapons are usually light. Yeah, that's why you just you stand it up and you let it hold your pistol for a little while. And <laughs> you lean on it. You, you kind of hold it like over your shoulders and drape your arms over it. And then and then when it comes time to you know split someone's head open, you just do the one. And you're like, okay, that whew, that was a hard day's work. But time if you're to, time to rest on it marching again. marching into battle, you need to split a lot of heads open. Yeah. And you only need to split the head, really. Right. If it was 15 pounds, like, I don't need to get into this person's solar plexus. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta be practical with yeah. your uh, with your murder. <laughs> um, let's talk fast facts before we get into the major fact. Uh, oil birds come from South America and the Caribbean. But I saw, like, a heat map for this one it was mostly, like, a sliver in South America. So, um, Really? So then, its diet, it, despite the fact that it's related to night jars and they're insectivores, oil birds are fruit eaters and usually spend uh, and use a specially adapted eyesight to forage for fruit at night. Um, and they particularly enjoy fruit of the oil palm. I wonder why. Palm oil? No. Probably something different. Uh... <clears throat> And uh, tropical laurels. You don't want to rest on those tropical laurels. Not ones to rest on their laurels. <laughs> they will retire to uh, caves and live in colonies. I'm so sorry. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they like to hang out in caves um, and cliffs and stuff. So we once thought that they literally never saw daylight because they would live in caves and then come out at night. But... Apparently, they spend a lot of their time in nesting in trees, but when they're breeding, they go to cave. They go to caves, and uh, it's safer in a cave with a with a bunch of eggs. Um, so they'll they'll also nest in cliffs and crags as well. My favorite cavemen. Cliffs and crags. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my favorite. Uh, I don't remember. Craig's Huxtable in in, in, that, <laughs> in, this, in the show. Uh, but uh, that's all I've got for that. Craig's uh, Huxtable is definitely the one that sells them drugs. That does sound like a uh, snake oil salesman's booth. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Yeah. 
I, I can find a good name for this major fact. Uh, he, see no evil, hear all the evil. It is the devil bird. It's the little devil, so, you know. <laughs> um, so oil birds are unique in the fact that there are, they are nocturnal frugivorous birds. Frugivores, they eat fruit. Uh, and in fact, they are the largest nocturnal frugivorous birds capable of flight. <laughs> it's really easy to be the best. Yeah. It's a big fish in a little pond kind of thing. It's very specific. It's like I'm probably the only Carlos in Jacksonville that uh, lets the milk soak in his cereal a bit before eating. Like that's I'm I'm the, I'm the only one. I'm the best. I don't know. I think that's probably like there, there could be like ten. Really? Uh, yeah. I feel like I'm the only person in the universe that does that. I thought it was like common practice, but like to like specifically enjoy a soggy cereal. Not soggy. Soggy Nelson. <laughs> Soghorn like horn. Yeah. Um not soggy, just just damp. I as soon as Moist. it touches moisture, it's damp. Yeah. So just like let it soak. Not no. not like Are sopping, you... but like get 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 the milk in there. If I wanted to eat dry cereal, crunchy cereal, I would dry, eat dry cereal and then drink milk. To chase it. But as soon as milk touches it for a, a millisecond, it's damp. No, it takes a little bit for it to soak in there. It's hydrophobic? No, so no. It, it just doesn't immediately saturate it. You, so you want the insides of it to be wet. Yeah, I want... I want. That's I, what I would consider soggy. No, no, no. Have you have never <coughs> let cereal get to the point where it's... I've never had cereal, actually. <laughs> <laughs> well, then you might be the only Joey... <laughs> I might be the only person. <laughs> that, uh, this is quite a superlative there. Uh, no, I've had cereal. I, I, I will do the thing where... If you let it get... If you if you leave it out for like 10 minutes, that... And that is, to me, soggy. Where it's like... That's like... It no longer... Homogenized. It no longer retains its shape. It is now one with the milk. No. Uh, it, you're, you're, you now have pulp, pulpy milk. Yes. Yeah. That's that's bad. I don't like that. But there 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 is like... A, there's 30 seconds... You, 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 you pour the cereal, pour the milk, and I want it 30 seconds. I want all of the cereal to absorb the milk, and then I start oh. eating. See, I will pile it like a da like a beaver dam to one side where there's like a like a pile um dry. And then I'll like slowly break down the dam. And as soon as it's wet, it's going in. I want it to be wet, cold, and crunchy. <laughs> See, I don't understand if you... <laughs> If you if you want your if you want your cereal to remain dry, pouring milk over it is just not the way to go. I gotta say. Well, I don't want it to be dry. I want it to be wet. Why don't you take like Why don't you take a cup of milk, and then just kind of sp sploosh it on every spoonful then, or like take a that's so much so or much take work. a spoonful and just like bloop into the into your milk like a like a milk and cookies. You don't want your you don't want to if. I want to eat my cookie and then have milk with it, but I'm not gonna like pour milk into my cookies. That's that's insane. Because I want the heat death of the bowl. I need <laughs> everything to be the same temperature. I like the cold milk to. <laughs> <laughs> the inevitable heat death of the bowl. <laughs> so that's what I want. See, I want I, cold and crunchy. I think it's uh, yeah. It's I, Captain Crunch, not Captain Mush. <laughs> no, I don't like Captain Mush. <laughs> <laughs> either he's uh he's the worst at parties but um i just i'll never understand the logic of like okay i've poured my cereal and i have t minus 15 seconds to eat all of this cereal after that's i've poured what, the milk that's where the dam is for. <laughs> but now now you're now you have logistics involved i love it now, it's a process now now you have like land development and uh, and engineering yeah. Um, and all I'm trying to do is just get eat a bowl of cereal. So, like, I have this window between, like, 30 seconds and, you know, like, seven minutes where I can eat the cereal and enjoy it. You, however, have up to 30 seconds <laughs> to enjoy that cereal. No, the, you the, are damn, on a timer. the damn works. The yeah, damn works. Yeah, but you're doing engineering. This is work now. It's great. But that makes sense. I mean, if, if cereal was work... I would eat less of it. And I should eat less of it. It's not that great for you. <laughs> but I also like, we'll have 10 bowls of it. But because I'm like, pouring it a little at a time. 10, 
That, what is that, your full-time job? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's taking you six hours to eat ten bowls of, of, of cereal at that rate. That would be an incredible job. <laughs> that, that would be the best job, <laughs> as long as you could uh, work off those calories. Anyway, we are so far off the beaten path here. People are hating this. Um, oil birds, because they live in caves and primarily come out at night, they often work in low light conditions. You don't even get hazard pay. To help them, uh, they have pretty incredible tools for a bird. It's common in other species, but for or in classes, but for birds, this is kind of unique. For one, they have eyes that can gather more light than those of any other bird. Um, they have extremely large pupils compared to their eye size. So, like, they're, they're anime. They're, like, when an anime character sees something that's cute and their pupils just become their eyes, that's this bird. Like, they no longer have, like, an iris with pupils inside. It's just, it's it's just a, one giant hole for light to get in there. It's an abyss yeah. for light. Yeah. Um, light abyss is my, f is my favorite anime. Um, they're, so... And they also have a very high density of rods um, in their retinas, which is similar to how a deep sea fish, the eyes of a deep sea fish would work, um, but not very similar to how anyone, uh, mammals or uh, birds would normally work. They actually have a million rods per square millimeter in their retinas, wow. um, which, is, which are special uh, light sensitive cells. Humans have 150,000. So they were nine times more. They, we see nine times less light than they do. Huh. Um, and cats, which notoriously have very good night vision, uh, have about 350 to 400,000 um, rods in their retinas. So still more than, more than double the night vision of cats. Wow. Cats are basically blind. Basically useless in the dark, yes. <laughs> um, but they have pretty low cone counts, which means that they don't see color very well and they don't see resolution very well. So humans and cats have them on that, on that count for sure. Um, but they don't need to <laughs> because they don't have to chase their food. They eat fruit. But they don't know which fruit they're eating. <laughs> <laughs> right. It's just this, it was this green puffball. That's really all I... Was, not even green. It was this light gray puffball that I ate. And... Uh, I think, I think I might be dying, Stan. <laughs> Stan the oil bird. Um, but they can also hunt by sound and not by sight. I was trying to like make a pun on like a, a rhyming pun with faith, uh, and then I realized that there's almost no words that are perfect rhymes with faith. Wraith. Would would you be okay? Would you would you have thought it was funny if I said a hunt by wraith and not by sight? <laughs> <laughs> it was like okay, where's how is how do ghosts fa factor into this oil birds hunting or um, eating? Um, that's that's it. that's pretty much it. I looked on th this is a good slant rhyme. Thesaurus.com and one of the one of the rhymes for faith is interfaith. <laughs> like the, no, that doesn't count. Um, hunt by grape and not by sight. But it doesn't work. We're talking about sound here. Talking about fruit as well. <clears throat> Not grapes, probably. So the thing that makes oil birds truly unique among their other avian brethren is their ability to echolocate. Like other animals that echolocate, like bats and dolphins, they can emit a series of uh, clicks and listen for the echo to determine how close they are to trees, fruit, cave walls. Not really problems for dolphins. <laughs> <laughs> but, cape but, walls. Uh, yeah, cape walls. Um, but it's not as um, it's not as sophisticated. It's not as complex as what dolphins have. Because we've talked about dolphin echolocation, and they have this thing called a melon, mm -hmm. which is this organ in their heads that allows them to both focus and amplify sound, and then also it's processed through the melon so that they can they can uh, very accurately determine objects. Details about objects from far away using their echolocation. Uh, oil birds don't have that. They they're looking for fruit. They don't already have a fruit and looking for fish. Melon. Oh, melon. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to put this in a way that didn't. <laughs> they use their melons to focus. <laughs> um, 
so the um the oil bird uses mid frequency like definitely audible by humans um kind of uh clicks and then they listen for the echoes they don't know exactly what role that the whispers play in this but uh researchers theorize that they play some sort of role um that well <clears throat> animals that like they have whispers hang out in the dark like a a cat and walruses <laughs> yeah <laughs> well uh and charles darwin and we'll have their and uh, ron swanson they, their whiskers help them like feel around in the dark when they're a face forward animal yeah so i guess in the cave in their nest moving around it helps them move around or when they're in a branch eating a fruit and tickling around to find the fruit you got to tickle around uh <laughs> with nothing but your whiskers yeah if you're gonna if you're gonna find fruit yeah they can't see the color so they got to tickle it to see mm -hmm. yeah uh just rub your face up against that and you're like that's a that's, that's got the tickle of an orange that's that, that's an orange <laughs> i don't need to see that to know that that's an orange uh, i just need to put my hair on it um but they they theorize that it helps them with the echolocation vibrations something like that but they they haven't uh tested it um but for the most part they they hear they listen for the the echo of the actual echo that like we would, but they're just very tuned to it. Mm -hmm. um, so uh, that's what helps them get around. Um, they are the only birds that use echolocation outside of a few species of swifts, and apparently they don't have enough oil or mustaches to be interesting. Um, and yeah, that's 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 all I got. It's a bird that basically um, is like a bat. It lives in a cave, it comes out at night, it echolocates. Did you talk about the fact that... <laughs> so we're not just going to leave the fact that I said chubby chicks at the beginning of this episode just hang in there. Um, the fact that their chicks are um, way more than they do as adults. Because they overfeed their chicks <laughs> before they can fly. But then they have to go on a diet to get into the sky. I don't, I don't know exactly what the process is for, for being able to fly, but the chicks are, uh, are, are fatter than the, the, the adults. You get it to be like 21 ounces or something like that, where adults are 17. Honey, I blew up the kid. Yeah. It's a, it's a Rick Moranis movie. <laughs> um, but also the, they do have a lot of oil in their, in their skin. Um, and they're called oil birds because, uh, People would boil the chicks. Really? To get oil out of them. Boil them to get oil. And they eat oil palm fruit. Yeah, so then... Is the palm named after the bird, maybe? Or does the does the fruit contain a lot of oil? And that's why they have a lot of oil. But then it's like, why not just go to the fruit, right? Why go through the hassle of boiling a chick? <laughs> <laughs> um... Maybe it's processed in a certain way. But oil. The oil is used by food manufacturing and beauty products and, and as well. Bio palm, palm oil accounted for 33% of oil. It's okay. Yeah, it's an oily food. Yeah. So that's all I got. You got anything else? That's all I got. All right. For you out there in podcast, yeah, that was the oil bird. Find a comfy cave, nestle in tight, and click your way to a better meal like the oil bird here in life. Hey Taxonomy Titans, I just want to remind you that we now have a Patreon. Patrons can see full video episodes and get shoutouts on the show. But ultimately, it's a way for you to help us cover some costs and get even better. Still, reviews are the best way to help us grow. So if you haven't left one yet, we'd really love to hear from you. As always, thanks for listening and engaging. Let's 
Death and Taxonomy is my favorite in the world podcast. <laughs> Goodbye. Have a beautiful time. <laughs> Have a beautiful time. Remember, God loves you. Or God made what what did he say? God made you special and he loves you very much. Goodbye. Is that, that VeggieTales? That's a VeggieTales sign off, yeah.